paramedics who were able to revive her. Hey, that's so awesome, dude. It's now been more than a year since British Columbia declared a public health emergency, and yet the number of dead from suspected drug overdoses has gone up. Despite the bleak signs, there are still some quiet victories. When a paramedic arrives with minutes to spare, they can pull victims away from the brink. Earlier this year, our Natalie Clancy followed paramedics racing to the front lines of the opioid crisis, and here's another look at her story. This is the most stressful part of the job, getting to the call. Brian Twaits has no idea how many of the 914 deaths last year happened on his shift. The 30-year veteran paramedic refuses to keep count. And there's a lot of times where it's just too late and we can't get their heart to restart. How often is that in your case? It happens frequently. Twaits has special training in advanced life support and travels alone in an SUV to back up paramedics on complex calls. Overdoses come in as a very critical emergency uh, in our system. They're not breathing uh, and literally are, are quite close to death. We actually bring the emergency room to you in the street. He carries a $40,000 monitor that will be useful on his next patient who is not breathing in a public washroom. Excuse me. Oh, they're doing like a good pulse? Yeah. She got the Narcan yet? Twaits draws up the Narcan shot he hopes will revive her. 0 0.8 here. Do you want to take care of that? And yeah, I'll uh, chart that on here so we get a time on my monitor for you. It's going to be a couple of minutes until she starts to wake here. Well, she was like pretty much face down on the floor. Okay. I mean, I'm just going to take that for a sec. Do you want to just check the back of her head? Just make sure we don't get any good big bumps there. This woman is fortunate. Her friends started to worry and found her here. A few more minutes alone in this washroom would have been too late. Hi, hon. Oh, hi, hi. It's okay. okay. Relax. You're giving Narcan, my dear. Okay. Oh, You're all right. Just relax. Just relax. Relax. You got an airway in your mouth. You pull that out. Pull the tube, tube in your mouth. Pull out the tube. It still took probably about five minutes, I think, after the Narcan for her to wake up. Hey! Her reaction to her very close call says it all. He's just outside. He's just outside. They haven't had a lot of oxygen circulating through the brain, so they're quite confused. And so they wake up confused in the middle, and you know, in this case of the bathroom floor, not knowing what's going on with a whole bunch of strange faces looking at them. And you know, I would imagine that's, I know I'd be alarmed. Why is this stuck in there? Her frantic friend says he had also overdosed himself earlier in the day. To kill some nerves and kill some stress or whatever. Went under and I didn't see it coming. And uh, she went under for a little bit. But well, she's back now. How long was she down? I give it take 30 minutes, 45 minutes. As far as when everybody showed up. And what do you think of the paramedics who were able to revive her? Hey, thanks, they're awesome, dude. Take care, you guys. Twait says she made the most deadly mistake a drug user can make. She used alone. That's a sad thing. Nobody wants to die alone. And uh, a lot of these people are, unfortunately. Like this man, who was long gone before anyone found him in a public washroom. Twait thinks death spiked in November and December because cold weather forced users indoors to use in places where no one will see them collapse. Or somebody didn't phone 911 soon enough. Um, I've seen cases where people have gone running to find a Narcan kit instead of phoning 911. And, it, you know, tragic, tragic outcomes because there's a telephone in the lobby of the building, but they elected to run somewhere else and find a Narcan kit. His advice to loved ones is call 911 first and dispatchers will tell you how to keep the patient alive until the paramedics arrive. Narcan is great, but it's oxygen. The, the, the deprivation of oxygen is what's killing these people. He also fears some users are afraid to call 911, afraid of police. The police aren't worried about the fact that you've overdosed to get you in trouble. They're the same as us. They want to see you get some help. Okay. Can't find him. Uh, they sit here up and breathing on their own, but there's nobody here. His next patient took off before he got there on a block where anyone in a uniform is not welcome. Go around the other side. They're getting really agitated. 
we got to go. There's stuff being thrown it's into every community, bed. Uh, and it affects all walk. Volume. 22 overdose calls. Toronto teaches chest compressions only. That's the worst thing you do. You need air before you give them lots of more air. Yes, sir. They teach all the signs of drug overdose, which mimics any respiratory emergency. They all need air. That recovery position can be dangerous. Yes, lack of oxygen. Anyway, just try to save lives because drug overdose signs mimic any respiratory emergency and these laypersons are eager to follow a clinician's instructions and give you chest compressions on a nice cyanotic blue background. That's the color of your skin dying lack of oxygen. Have a good one.